Is it possible to install these wires in this panel in a fashion that's too organized and neat? Yes, it is. We're going to talk about why and fireplace update. The first thing we need to talk about has nothing to do with the fireplace. <laughs> We're not going to talk about all the safety requirements when it comes to working with electricity. Please do your own homework on that. I will tell you one very simple rule that I tell everyone that's working around me whenever I'm working inside of a panel. If it's shiny, it can kill you. <laughs> Respect it, leave it alone, let the professional do it. Anywho, what I will talk about is the layout of the wiring. Now, if you are working inside of a panel, you need to have everything neat and organized. So the next person behind you will know how to trace out the wire, see what's going on, and not be fishing around in there and dealing with a hot mess. And here's an example of what it should not look like. When it comes to working inside of a panel like this, if you make it too organized and neat, it can actually be a problem. And let's talk about that. So you have your Romax, you have your outside shielding, you have each wire insulated, that's the working wires, as some call it. So you have your neutral, you have your ground, which is the bare wire, and then you have your hot lead. So the hot lead itself is your biggest concern most of your electrons will be traveling on this wire. And if you come out of this uh, breaker and you do a hard 90 degree turn, another hard 90 degree turn, and another one to leave the panel, you can actually cause a problem. And let's talk about that. So when you make a hard 90 degree turn, the electrons are traveling on the outside of the wire, not through the core, they're on the outside. And as they travel along that wire, and then they have to make that hard 90 degree turn, this creates a bottleneck for the electrons to travel on. And what ends up happening is you end up building heat right there. So anywhere throughout the house, you travel hard 90, you're gonna create a hot spot in your wire. Now, most of the time it's not that big of a deal, but inside of a panel, it really can be. If all these are hard 90s, let's say dad's in the kitchen cooking up a storm, and the electric range is running and the small appliances are going, a microwave is running, and little Susie is loading the dishwasher and it's about to go, and little Johnny's vacuuming the living room, mom's getting out of the bath and about to blow dry her hair. You have all these different things that are running, right? And so all that power is coming out of this panel and running out these distribution wires. So every time you're activating a circuit, and you've got that hard 90 degree turn, every one of those is getting warm and warm and warm. You can really build a fair bit of heat inside of a panel. So you wanna avoid that. And all you need to do, instead of having your hard 90, is just swoop it out. A nice gradual change. Then the electrons can flow, there's no bottleneck, you won't build heat. Whew. <laughs> Now, it's time for me to get all these wires in here. Activate the time lapse. Doop. When running your Romex into your panel, it's best to leave the sheathing on to the outside and put it through your connector 
and then cut it after the fact. Now, when cutting the Romax, you want to be careful on how you do it. You do not want to damage the sheathing or shielding around the white or the black. So you take your knife and you go right to the center of the outer sheathing and nice and slowly make your incision and you peel it back. Make sure you get all your paper and everything in there. Now, once you have it peeled back, the last thing you want to do is cut this and cut the sheathing on one of your black or your white wire. So you put your knife behind, put a fair bit of tension on it, turn it away from the wire and cut away. And that will prevent you from doing that. You know, in my particular nature, I like to keep things pretty neat, pretty organized. And one of the things that I do inside of an electrical panel that I don't well, ever see really, is I'll alternate my grounds and neutrals all the way across. And I keep my grounds and neutrals next to the breaker they belong to. And in a main panel, you can do that. On a sub panel, you have to keep your neutrals and grounds separated, but this is the main panel. It's the only panel this house has. So this way, you can do it this way. And if you ever had to, you know, um, trace back a wire, it's not that hard for you to go ahead and find the, the ground, the neutral and um, power, <laughs> and then pull that wire out if you ever had to. Just my two cents. All right, so that's smoke detection one, three, five, seven, nine, eleven. Eleven smoke. Have I got some good news. Let me tell you, in the background, I have been working on something that I haven't shared with you about this project because I, I don't dwell in drama. I don't want to, you know, bring up a problem to you and then, you know, dwell on it. It's, it's just not who I am. I am all about solutions. Find a solution, deal with the problem. And so I found it. Well, the problem was the stock market <laughs> plummeted. Not plummeted, but you know, it took a hit. A bunch of investments dried right up, including all the money that was funding this project. And when that happened, I had to find a plan B right now. <laughs> so my options were go to the bank, get a loan, uh, trade in all my investments, take all the hits on the fees, uh, abandon the property, go work for customers, come back to it. Uh, it wasn't a huge fan of that one. Uh, and then the worst option was sell it. Uh, I did bring a realtor in and she said that I could sell it in the shape that it's in 
the floor plan is pretty well laid out. Someone can actually see what the future could hold. And yeah, that's that was an option. Um, you know, maybe roll the dice if that person happens to hire me to finish it. Uh, maybe, most likely not. But uh, I, I didn't I didn't like that option. I really didn't want to risk Frankie not getting completed correctly. Let's just put it out there. There's an awful lot of investors that like to, you know, ring the dime out of everything that they do. And I didn't want to do this to Frankie. I wanted her to get done, get done correctly. And so we're going to, because the bank got back to me and we are approved. <laughs> uh, I signed all the paperwork last Friday and we are moving forward. And I do have a pretty tight timeline on getting this project finished. That being said, that means I'm not going to be able to put the level of carpentry that I'm capable of into this project. Honestly, the neighborhood wouldn't really support it anyway. So, I mean, as it is, it's going to be one of the nicest houses around. So, um, I'm just stoked that the project's going to get finished and that I get to finish it. I am so relieved. That has been holding me down for so long now that... <sighs> I'm relieved, a little stressed, <laughs> but relieved, absolutely relieved. Well, with that said, I need to get back to work. Thank you guys for watching. If you wouldn't mind hitting that like button, maybe share, I don't know, or subscribe even, that'd be appreciated. All right, guys, love you. Talk to you later, bye. A while back, I jacked up the center of the house to level out the floor system and made a bunch of repairs to the floor itself, the framing of it. And when I did that, it raised this section over here three quarters of an inch, which means that side was that much lower than this side. And there was a slant to it. And yeah, there are things I could have done to kind of hide it, but that's just not who I am, right? So. Since that repair that was done, and now working on the fireplace, the living room had filled with siding, right? We're trying to get all the siding prepped to do the outside, and so there are tarps and whatever covering all this up, and honestly, under full disclosure, I completely forgot having to have to do this. And because I forgot, I guess not because I forgot, but... <laughs> And having it all covered up, I went ahead and built that timber frame. <laughs> and when I did that, I locked the floor location down and there really wasn't much to change it at that point. So that's why I started thinking about other ways of solving the slant and I just didn't like any of them. So in true Sean form, I went ahead, supported the ceiling, supported the post, undercut the post by three quarters of an inch, jacked up the floor system, and here you go. The floor is now where it belongs. I also sistered the joists over there because some of them had started to curl. So I went ahead and took care of all that. So now that's all solved. That's solved, this is solved. Now let's get to the fireplace. I built this little box and I did that because the gas insert, well, is that much smaller than the total opening here. And I decided, well, instead of putting brick underneath here and across the bottom there, to kind of, you know, center the whole thing, I'd rather have the fireplace raised. Because I always find that more appealing when you come to a space and you see a raised fireplace instead of one that's just slammed on the floor. And then that gives me the opportunity to do a raised hearth, if I so choose. I haven't decided on that yet. Why don't you put a little comment down below? Would you like to see a raised hearth here or not? And if so, what material would you use? And then the next thing was, how are we gonna trim out the fireplace? What's it gonna look like? And as you can see here, if you've been following along on a project, last week I had this all mortared over and kind of capped off so you couldn't see the fire brick. And 
because my original plan was to cover this whole surround with a six inch angle iron. Now steel prices are way up there. So could I do it? Yes, I could. But you know, I, I gotta put the screws to the budget, right? And I have a pile of miscellaneous tile, including some really old looking stone tile. So well, it's not actual stone. It looks like old stone. It's pretty good, trust me. So I could face it with that, or I can you know, find some other tile, or I could go back to the angle iron idea. I'm not 100% sold on exactly what I'm gonna do there. But because I am think, leaning more towards the tile, I went ahead and just cut that out. Hopefully I don't regret that. <laughs> anyway, uh, right, so we built the box. We have that. I have a nice little tip for you on how to cut the cement board. I was just about to snap this off and I thought, well, maybe some of you don't know about this. So I thought I'd show you. When it comes to cement board, you don't need a specialized saw or fancy wet grinder or anything like that. All you need is a utility knife. And you don't even have to have a good blade in it. It doesn't matter. All you're gonna do is score the surface like I've done here with just the knife, right? Take it in there. Now I've done two passes, okay? You wanna put your cut edge on the edge of your sawhorse or table or whatever you're working on, on both sides. You need to anchor the side that is staying on the sawhorses. And then all you need to do is just snap the other side off. Just like that. No dust, no issues, no extra safety stuff or anything. Makes a nice cut. I mean, good enough for what you're doing. And this is higher uh, cement board that was repurposed. I pulled this off a project and been storing it ever since, just waiting to come here to Frankie. And then we built the surround in the back here because you have to have a fireproof chamber for the gas insert to sit into. Now this one is a baffled design, so it does have a rear heat shield on it. So it directs more of the heat that it produces into the living space and it has a blower fan. So it should be pretty efficient, really. And so I can have a really tight firebox. It calls for 14 inches, I made it 15, you know, whatever. And you know, I ran the wire. When my electrical inspector shows up, I can ask him how exactly he wants to see this finished. Because the, the manual for the gas insert and the code is kind of vague. I just know that it's an, it's a, inhibit it. It's an appliance and it's being inserted. It's like a dishwasher. You can't just plug it in. You have to have a hard wire. At least that's how I understand it. Anyway, so that's been run and roughed in and that's all set. And now for the bad news. I watch a fair number of these renovation shows on YouTube and all of them seem to have kind of a similar way of doing the big reveal. And for me, I typically don't watch the big reveals because I've seen everything finished up to that point. So what I'm thinking, I'm gonna do mine a little bit different. And I hope this doesn't bite me. <laughs> well, we'll find out. Um, what I'm thinking is, this will be the last time you guys see the fireplace. I'm gonna go ahead and you know, obviously continue to work on it and get it all finished. And at the big reveal, then you're gonna see this thing completed with its mantle and the whatever I decide to do here and the insert installed, you know, and the TV surround or whatever I'm doing up there. And if you've enjoyed watching the journey of the fireplace and you wanna make sure that you get to the uh, final video, hit that subscribe button and maybe the notification bell, the little jingle jingle. <laughs> and uh, that way you know when I drop the next video and you know hopefully the last video yeah well 
there you have it. I just texted the electrical inspector and we'll see when he can come by because now the house is ready for roughing inspection. Whew, that's been a long time coming. The last time he was here is when I put the electrical box on the exterior of the building. And that was a long time ago. Anyway, so we're moving right along, checking things off the list before sheetrock because that's scheduled for second week of September and not confirmed, but scheduled. Um, what's next? I have a little bit of framing to do before then. And so I might do that this week and plumbing, plumbing. It's time. It's time to start plumbing. Wish me luck, because I'm going to need it. Boy. Hold on. Look at that. He'll be here tomorrow. <laughs> Man, I told you, he's responsive on text. All right. I hope you enjoyed the episode. Got any questions, comments, you know, leave them on down below. And until next week, thanks for stopping by High Peace Home. To all of you that are still watching, I got a sneak peek for you. <laughs>